My fellow Americans. That's the only Brexit joke I'm going to do. So. This is called Why Visit Ruins, or Why Visit Ruins. She sleeps fretfully, quivering next to me as I hold her small foot in my old fist in a king-size sickbed in Mexico. We listen to the hidden lizard in the thatch above us, clucking a yabu response to wet grackles outside looking for a morsel. It rains all morning and the fans give in as the grid temps out. We sweat into ourselves as animals. And I made myself say, all will be well after breakfast. But the kids' insides flip out and I wash her hair free of egg white and banana. We play eye games instead of swimming in the sea and we, drop, we drink Pedialyte instead of beer. <laughs> the liquid perils of being a tourist. <laughs> Ta. This is called Northern Genii. A thumbnail moon snaggles up for the night caught comfy in the baggy black pullover of the sky. Warm animal life in this northern town is dumb now and all insects dry. Even the moths are dust. A genie slicks through the crepuscular streets. A muscular brain no one follows. No one knows as no one hears. Ears usually attuned to the tinkle of coins on the pavement. Eyes to their corners straining ready to come out fighting. There is no time to think. There is no room to breathe, to earn only and exist. No ideas here, yet there is a name on the tip of old tongues. Genius. What was it? Hold that thought. He is lexical access incarnate, the answer personified, and yet the city lets him slide right on. He glides by like a football on a wet Sunday morning during your pub team's 11 aside struggle to get going. Crapulous athletic nil, hungover academicals nil. And would anyone for once pick into play? Who needs to score? It's all about not losing here, especially against them there. The genius sidles off down south through rainbow ridden puddles, splashing in streets of toxic gold. As he goes, no one follows. Thanks. And if you're like, what's that all about? What's that all about? Our life is liquid. We drink up familiar roads in the rain, roads lined with half abandoned mills, and while it is not yet light, these semi shattered brick monsters loom over us as they always have. The roads look slick with 6 a.m. drizzle. So we head for the ginnel to the grass of the canal bank and uncork a bottle as we celebrate the end of another shift. We watch the purple light start on any movement in the water and even though I listen to Joe yawn with the effort of advice, my last thought is that loss has no need for sleep. A blackbird sings, he is a loud one, who else to wake and everything, proud and first and loudest. He is joined later by others of dull colours, some that can't sing, like the gulls who try without a syrinx. And my first thought is of her, how we let us slip, because we are fluid and hard to hold on to, like a single teardrop. It's too early now to have quality sleep. There are songs to be sung anyhow before dawn. We are beneath the symphony again. And she always said, I hate music. <laughs> All right, um, this one's for uh, Phil and Vincent and George Wallace. He wasn't here, obviously, but there you go. It's called The Lake Effect. Sing in me, through me, tell the story of a four wheel drive to Chautauqua County through a blizzard of name drops. Beside himself was George Wallace. <laughs> said his name. Wallace, fresh out of Long Island by way of Brooklyn. He'd been reading with Robert Gibbons over cups of tea and lager in a bookshop. The snow came down somewhere in Pennsylvania. We avoided the traps of the Amish and auto-corrected slips like a Highlander to witness a white dawn over the whitest town of which Groucho couldn't belong. There was no hail in Fredonia. 
only snow and only snow and snow. <laughs> Vincent made arrangements to meet us in a parking lot at some strip mall that had not been ploughed. We sat in fridged to stretch your legs meant death. We breathed our watch and watch and waited for the end. There he was though after a while with some familiar smile and a gathering was in and a hotel on the edge of a lake where even the geese had purple feet or flippers. And we all relieved our gasps and bedded our side size to be, just to be stationary. And then there was Philip Jambi. <laughs> the years melted like a hot toddler's impatience to blow out those carvel candles. We were all of a piece, the four of us, one for each decade after sensible. And where did we leave that sense? We left ourselves on a stage, big dripping puddles of half-formed, imagined. As Hal Hartley said, there's no such thing as adventure and romance, there's only trouble and desire. <laughs> so, to the girls' rugby team that arm wrestled you into the night. Yes. <laughs> to the invitations that kept coming, to Vincent Q's wife, to the cold winds of Buffalo and Emberons, to again. Thank you. How long has it been? That was the, when we left, that was a seven foot snowstorm. No, I mean, how long have we been on? <laughs> seven minutes. We got eight left. It stops in Yonkers, with us there, unwanted. Once thirsty for it, we will it back to the wild. Chives and birds, garlic, mustard, cow parsley, the overgrowth on the underwater. We had a thought on the Hudson line by the Budlier's lilac wash, something about necessity over everything, even form. But we got off and then, and forgot what it was like to get lost. The blush of these dogwoods still and open up here on a hill by the banks and old bankers of Hudson. The day is blue and green, and the music of conversation is avian. The leaves about the palisades wave like they have just learned to say hello. There is a discord now, and we should have gone and stopped contemplating how can we stop. Okay. So now I'm going to read you a little story thing. It's called Dad Bag, which will make sense. <laughs> Son, I try to talk but cannot. I wake up in a different country with two women poking me. <laughs> Son, what are you doing here? This is what comes through after a while. What day is it, I ask. What sort of question is that? I don't know. Tuesday. Where are you usually on a Tuesday? Which one, I say, biding my time blinking. She says, would you like a calendar now? <laughs> Were you with the party last night, the other woman says. I nod. It's okay, he was at the wake, just giving some tea. I think he's from your up. I drink a cup of sugary tea and rouse from the pub snug as they tidy around me, emptying the ashtrays. Did you see the foot lady yesterday, Maisie? I did, Min. I have to say, I had my doubts, but I have no complaint. <laughs> These big city blow-ins, they don't know what we have to put up with. Oh, now, her mother was a culture just like you. There she was, hacking away at my foot like a combine harvester. I says to her, it's not that kind of corn. <laughs> As I listen to this, am I forgetting something? I can't feel my fingers. What is it that I had? I had something with me, I know. I can yawn. Fuck, I can taste my tongue. I had a tongue with me last time I looked. Who looks at their tongue? I can't feel my bag. That's it. I had a bag with me. And something to do. And then I remember Dad in his urn. In my bag. Where's my bag? I can't shout as my head. The ladies are hoovering. I feel vertiginously sick, so I scuttle off to the bug. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to piss, though, as my dick has shrunk and I can't find it. My body turns cold. I pull down my jeans and sit on the toilet and hack into the sink next to my head. My puke is pure yellow and bitter. 
I start to sweat and the convulsions help me release some urine and ultimately some shit. Everything is all right after 10 minutes, except that my ass and my throat are sore. I wash my face and drink from the bathroom tap. It tastes like tan water and I'm grateful for that time left alone. When I come out of there, the ladies are polishing brass pipes and beer pumps. I sit back down and stew. They leave me be. But when I eventually ask, no bag has been lost here or found. I think I know what has happened. Nigel and his drugs. And I am a fool full of regret that cannot function until I get more sleep. I nod off again, but I am in and out of things. Our family is waiting for us in Cork at the family plot, and all I had to do was bring Dad's ashes over from England. Sleep is good for exposition. As soon as the bar opens, I am ready for a pint. It burns me, but I don't care. I run to the toilet again, and I think that should be the end of it. I order another pint, and after, I am able to stabilise myself. I weigh the consequences and wonder if this has happened before. The stealing of an urn, I mean. It must have happened before. Maybe they thought something else was in it. I don't even know where I am. Am, am I still in... I am assuming I, I am still here. Should I ask Dublin? It doesn't seem like Dublin. Too old-timey. Where then? Am I still in... Where is close? Did I go north or south? I don't want to draw attention to myself. Or what does that matter? They think I'm an idiot anyway. <laughs> I could say anywhere. Am I still in trouble? I ask. No, oh, kid, this is Waterford, comes the reply. Thank you. Christ, I'm two counties away from where we started. He could be anywhere in between. I realise I have become an unreliable narrator and I resolve to do better. I venture out into Bally, this or that. My head is clear now. The sky has rain clouds, which helps my blinking eyes. There is not much to this main street. I wander down the drag to sit and crash on the forgotten sand. There's a grey sky, gulls, the shick and shuck of a sea that we'd skim thin stones at, that sea between us that was so easy to cross. I smoke a cigarette and have an absent-minded moment where I look for an ashtray, but I'm on the beach, so I let the ash go through the little pebbles there, and then I have a feckin' epiphany. The funeral power. I just need an urn. What for? For my dad. What does he need one for? He likes them. No, he doesn't. It's just, he's got nowhere else to go. I see. Was he Catholic? Uh, yeah. So what you need is a coffin. Oh shit, Ireland. Not only have I lost my dad, but I've lost his house too. It was a little plastic house, but still, it was his house.